Those that are able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you. We are going to head into our virtue card reading. Pat will give us a read when he's ready. Tonight's virtue is moderation. Moderation is creating a healthy balance in your life between work and play, rest and exercise. You don't overdo or get swept away by things you like. You use your self-discipline to take charge of your life and your time. You're practicing moderation when you get enough of what you need, no more, no less. You use self-discipline to stop yourself from overdoing. Take care of your health. Balance work and play in your life. Know your own limits and set and set boundaries for yourself. Are content with enough. Affirmation. I am moderate. I am thankful and content to get what I need. I use my time and energy wisely. My life is well balanced. Thank you, Pat. Good one. Uh, Board of Education guidelines with an open mind will establish an atmosphere that allows expression of all views, even when views are not in line with all members being respectful of time. We work collaboratively with the district administrator by having open and honest conversations around district priorities. We work collaboratively with all stakeholders to monitor key indicators so that equitable teaching and learning results in high achievement. We work toward building a trusting environment where both students and staff can reach their full potential and celebrate successes in academics, the arts, and athletics. And then with that, tonight we're going to roll into public comments. I am probably going to save us some time and not read it. I don't know if we have any tonight. All right. With that silence, we'll move forward into showcasing schools and student learning. We have Joe in here tonight from the Boys and Girls Club. Um, he is a unit director for NACUSA. Joe? So I'll just read real quickly our overarching results, the board's results, say... Nikusa School District develops students who excel academically, act responsibly, display good character and citizenship, and reason and solve problems rationally. We will focus on preparing our students with the skills they will need in today's global community. So we have Joe here tonight uh, for the Boys and Girls Club, and that's our before and after school programming over at the middle school. So, Joe, you want to introduce, do you, you know the whole board, Joe? Uh, I think I met everybody here. Before yes, all right. Yeah. So I'll um, I'll run your PowerPoint. Hopefully okay. it'll work. So yeah, yeah I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'm just trying to do a little overview to let you guys know like what you know Boys and Girls Club has accomplished over the. I've been here now. This will be my seventh year with uh, Nakusa, and right now we are at 151 registered members out of the 300 I think 80 some odd kids that are in the middle school. So that is huge. That's the biggest number we've ever had um, in my going on seven years of being here. Um, we also are reaching numbers uh, that in the morning are in the 50s some days and then in the afternoon we've also reached in the 60s. So our, our, our average air, the daily attendance is 45 and 51. Um, Programming wise, uh, we are a CLC, so we're a community learning center, which Terry was just touching base on the grant a little bit. Um, I'm just talking based on what we did first quarter. Uh, we focused on STEM writing and arts and crafts. And for the STEM program, uh, the kids love the, the Dash and the Osmos. Anything that they can have that's like a hands-on building technology based thing, they're all in. Um, and the best part is, you know, they teach me as we go because I'm not the most tech-savvy person. So, and anytime you do challenges, challenges with kids, they, they have fun. I hope they do too because there are two club kids back there. <laughs> <laughs> I can add their input. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, writing, uh, the best part, we, we do this every year. We just finished writing our book. We do a book with the teens and we do a book with the youth. 
um, and they pick a topic of the book that they want to write about and uh, they both finish creating their books. Their parents get a chance to also purchase the books. So this year we also had uh, record numbers of parents that purchased the books that we created also. So that was pretty awesome. Um, uh, arts and crafts, I, I think that's the one thing that our, all our club members excel in. Um, they are all very creative. Uh, this year we did some rock painting th thus far. Uh, anything that we can like do with clay, they excel. I'm, I'm just blown away on how creative they are. Uh, if you guys ever get a chance, uh, stop on by. We showcase their work. We have a nice display case that uh, the kids, we try to display the things that they do. And then uh, we always work on team building with anything that we do. All three of these things, uh, we work on getting them to work together because as we all know, when you start getting a job, you got to work with people of all different natures. So, all right. Uh, a nice thing that we started last year, uh, we get to teach the sixth grade class, me and Laura. I don't know if, uh, how many of you guys know Laura uh, Bonner Ridgeway. Uh, she's a great asset to our team and she, we get to work together every day. Um, and we teach a class that, you know, the first, we have the kids uh, in sixth grade, we'll have a group uh, first and third quarter, and then we'll have a group second and fourth quarter. And then the, the first two quarters, we'll do life skills with them. Um, so it, it's things that um, buy, you'll, we'll teach them like the basics of, you know, buying and selecting a house, you know, also a car, seeing, you know, getting them to appreciate what their parents really put in because I think a lot of them are shocked by interest rates and how much your house, well, I paid 200000 for this house, but in reality, after you pay the interest and all the, you know, whether, you know, it's a 15 year, or, you know, or a 30 year, 20 or whatever loan you may choose for your house, they're, they're kind of blown away by it. And we also do a thing of uh, furnishing the house afterwards. <laughs> so the kids are like, it costs that much. I'm like, yeah. It costs that much, so that's why your parents are usually on you to not jump on the furniture or, <laughs> you know, things like that. Uh, we do a little introduce it. We introduce the stock market to them, not too crazy, just understanding, you know, the, the little basics of, you know, uh, if you were to purchase stock and then we work on, you know, getting them to understand when they start getting jobs, how to budget their money, you know, whether it be how much percentages you want to put in the savings, you know, go with your friends, spending money, uh, things like that. Uh, and then the second uh, unit we do with them is a career launch where we work with Mid-State uh, Technical College and uh, we get the kids exploring careers. Uh, we want them to start thinking about, you know, it's never too young to start thinking about your future. Um, uh, we do things like uh, we, we help them biz build resumes. Uh, I know they're a little generic at their age, but it's getting them to understand the importance of uh, building relations with, you know, staff like us, like, like their teachers, principals, because those are the people, teachers, that you're going to be asking to be, you know, references for you. You can't ask mom or dad, which blows all of them away. Like, well, <laughs> why can't mom and dad be my reference? Well... Mom and dad are always going to say nice things about you. <laughs> uh, and then the one thing that uh, uh, we really focus on during the career launch unit is the interviewing skills. Um, it's one thing that while I was growing up, I was a pretty timid, shy person who struggled to speak to anybody, <laughs> believe it or not. Um, and uh, getting them to, you know, get used to answering, you know, they're, they're not like really technical questions, but they're, they're questions that may be asked of you when you are applying for a job. So uh, the one thing that I think uh, has really helped bridge our gap is the, the relationships that we have built throughout the school day uh, with you know not only the kids, but with our teachers. Uh, we get the opportunity, like I said in the prior slide, to uh, we get to teach that uh, sixth grade class eighth hour which you know that we get an opportunity to work with a whole class and it keeps going down so you know and then it brings in 
Um, it brings in other club kids also, which, you know, which helps. Uh, I help run uh, indoor recess uh, for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. I also help with 4th and 5th if we have a rain day or, you know, something. And uh, I've been asked this year, which I, I love doing, you know, I like going on field trips because it's a chance for me to, you know, meet some of the kids that are not club kids and see what makes them tick. Um, uh, Laura and I are also... Um, uh, we're helpers in the classroom, so if anybody needs help, you know, or gets called, you know, and they're short, I have no problem going to help in the classroom. Uh, we always will be willing to help with behaviors. Um, and then uh, a new thing that was started this year, uh, which Laura does, is uh, the student tardies. So if uh, they, I, I don't know the exact rules to it, but if they miss or if they're late a couple of times throughout the day, they have to serve like a certain amount of minutes. Um, but uh, the one thing over the years that I've really enjoyed is the teacher and the Boys and Girls Club staff relationship. I, I can honestly say, um, I, I, some people say I don't look that old, but I am older than most people think. I've really enjoyed the relationships that I've been able to build with everybody at Alexander Middle School the last seven years. So. Um, uh, our family nights, uh, I'm going to touch base, we had our first family night this year. We had the Lights On After School event, which is, uh, it's an event that uh, is showcasing the Boys and Girls Club. Uh, we had, this was our record number from the seven years that I've been here. Uh, we had 27 families attend and almost 70 total people within those families, which, you know, which is huge for us because when I first started, we couldn't get, I mean, you'd be lucky to get one or two families to come to a family night. It was rough. So now, you know, as of last year and this year, it's been nice to get some, you know, buy-in from our families and, you know, it, it's been great. So uh, uh, next slide is talking about our future events. So what's coming up, uh, we have our holiday party at the Wisconsin Rapids unit. Um, we also have a holiday party that we have at Nakusa, which is another family night, which the kids really enjoy. They get to uh, frost cookies with their parents. They get to make, uh, they always do a gift for their parents, which I won't say because they might make one for dad or mom. <laughs> um, so uh, the art show is a new thing that we are going to be showcasing um, this year. Uh, it's going to be in April, which is going to showcase all the things that we've been doing throughout the school year with our kids. So they can show their parents. Um, the Club 105 event is an event that we do every year which showcases the kids that really buy into the club. If you attend 105 days to the Boys and Girls Club, uh, you get the opportunity to go to the Club 105 event, uh, which has been at a numerous amount of places. We let the kids always vote. This is their choice. The kids that uh, Get, get to, you know, that are in that 105 day boat, they get to vote on where they want to go. So we'll give them some options, whether it be uh, they want to go bowling, uh, they want to go to the movie theater, they want to go to Skate City. Uh, we let them, you know, give us some choices. We narrow it down to like three, and then all the clubs, you know, Port, Port Edwards, Nakusa, and Rapids, they all vote on it. So it's something that they get a, get a buy in. And my favorite event is the Teen and Youth of the Year event. Uh, that this year, if any of you guys get a chance and you are free Wednesday, May 24th, I mean, I, I really get to reflect and see all the great kids that we have at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, I, I, I'm very appreciative Terry was able to go to the last couple that we've had and uh, I love the support and um, I know that I struggle through it. <laughs> not, not it's a bad thing, it's just I get a very emotional through it because I care about what we do. I'll move on so I'm not crying for you guys. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> uh, what's coming up this week with the kids, uh, the Veterans Day ceremony is on Friday. Uh, our kids really wanted to do something this year for the Veterans Day ceremony. Uh, they have made homemade cards uh, the last couple weeks, and they have made some posters for uh, to surprise uh, the people that are going to be there. And it's great to see how appreciative a lot, because a lot of these kids have family members that are, you know, 
military members and have serviced our country. And I'm looking forward to Friday to, you know, let our great kids that are part of club, you know, celebrate and be a part of the event. So, uh, community service that we do throughout the year. I'm not going to go into like everything, but the next coming thing that we have, we've been been doing this since I've been there. The kids, they they go gung ho on making ornaments for everybody that is uh, uh, staff here at Nakusa. So, um, uh, starting after I think. Uh, Probably after the event on Friday, we will be starting our uh, 250 array of ornaments for all the staff here. And uh, our kids really enjoy, I put this on here, the cleanup. They love going outside and picking up trash around the school, <laughs> which is good. You know, it shows their character. Um, so uh, I'm going to showcase, we've had two months of school right now. Uh, these are four, hey, one of them, there you go. Uh, one of them's dad is here right now. Um, but uh, Dell uh, and Kaylee, Kevin, and Cameron have all been uh, members of the month the last two months. And I just put on there the things that they uh, love about the Boys and Girls Club. So Dell said he loves being able to be with his friends. Uh, Kaylee, uh, she loves all the projects we do and all the staff members here at club. Uh, Kevin's only answer was he loves the staff here. <laughs> I mean, and but Kevin has been a kid that's been with us from fourth grade, and that kid has gone through. I I am so proud of that young man from fourth grade to eighth grade. Now he is he is a totally different person. Wow, you know, and then uh, Cameron this year, which uh, some of you guys obviously know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he was pretty excited when he brought the chocolate milk home. Nah. So, <laughs> he loves the crafts that we get to do. And, you know, these are the kids that really represent and set the bar for everybody at a club. And, you know, throughout the year, I can't wait to see the rest of them that we get. And then at that Youth and Teen of the Year event that we do, um, all of our staff get a chance to speak about all these wonderful club members. So, you know, if if you guys get the chance and you're free, you're all welcome Wednesday, May 24th. Um, and then, uh, did it skip some? Did I? Oh, did it erase one? Uh, that's all right. I There was one more slide that I was going to have two people come in here today. Uh, um, Allie and uh, McKenna. I thought I had slides from on there. I may have deleted it showing you before, but... Um, they have been staff and club kids for the Boys and Girls Club, and I wanted them to speak a little bit about what the club has done for them, not only as uh, club kids, but as staff. So um, I didn't get to look at this at, that much. They gave it to me tonight. It's kind of the last minute, but um, we asked them a couple of questions, and they were going to, I said, it doesn't have to be long. Just talk for like 30 seconds each. But um, their answers for... Uh, what impact did the club have on you growing up? Um, uh, McKenna said, the club was a safe place for me where I felt I could, I could be comfortable being me. Uh, the club taught me it's okay to be you and be proud of my differences. Um, Allie said, uh, to that answer, she said, growing up at the club helped me out uh, by getting me out of my shell. Uh, it helped me realize that uh, talking to adults is not a scary thing. Um, I thought it was going to be funny, but uh, was there a youth development professional that posit positively impacted you growing up? Uh, McKenna said uh, yes. Her name was Jamie. Uh, she no longer works for the club, but she taught me to embrace what I am and not be scared of trying new things. Uh -huh. Oh, I didn't read this one yet. Um, <laughs> uh, Allie put, during my time at the club, uh, Joe made the biggest impact on me. Um, <laughs> he always knew what I needed to hear, even when I didn't want to hear it. Um, sorry. <laughs> uh, number five uh, was a question. I'm not reading them all. I just want to go a little bit over it. Uh, why did you choose to become a youth development professional? Uh, I wanted to create a place where the younger generation would get great memories and friends like I did at club. And then uh, Allie put, I chose to be a youth development professional because I wanted to be able to make an impact on kids' lives 
just like the people that worked at the club when I went there did for me. So, wow, sorry. Uh, <laughs> th these are the things that, I mean, oh, geez, that make me love what I do um, and what our team does. Um, sorry. Um, well, we appreciate it, John, mm -hmm. yeah, very much. Sure. So, I mean, just think of this now through that lens. Nakusa School District develops students who excel academically, act responsibly, display good characters, character and citizenship, and reason and solve problems rationally. We focus on preparing our students with the skills they will need in today's global community. And I mean, you nailed mm -hmm. it. You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is something that our, our community and district desperately needs. Um, the stimulation, definitely from COVID, the interaction is a support role model. So. Um, I think we can all hear the, the passion when you're going through the presentation, so um, thank you for the work that you And do. that's me. Supposedly, she made that and she said <laughs> So that's why I put that one on there. I just thought it was funny. They made, they made models. They did, they did models of certain rooms together in groups and uh, like of the Boys and Girls Club and stuff and she was so proud of me. I would have not figured that out. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. So... Well, thank you, Joe. Yeah. We appreciate thank you, it. Joe. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Or I know that I don't know how much time you guys have, and I didn't want to go too crazy with time. Yeah. Any questions? You know. Not really a question. You know. I just know, just knowing you and working with you a little bit, and you've coached my kids in sports and stuff too. So just even outside the boys and girls club, I know your passion for the kids, and you and I have had a couple of side discussions, and I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you. On all levels. That's what it's all about, those, those good comments from kids. Yeah. All right, well, with Thanks, that, Joe. Thank, thank you, you, Joe. We are going to move forward. We have Eric, Eric Saylor in tonight to give us a technology update. Well, <clears throat> thanks for having me back. Uh, I think the last time I was here, uh, we were discussing the possible approval for the one-to-one -one initiative for the Chromebooks. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just want to again give you guys an update on where we are on that, um, how things are going, what we're learning, um, just quickly. So I want to say that we implemented, everything was approved, everything was put in, and we were learning as we went. Um, so there's been some hiccups, there's been some pivoting of some, uh, of some things. Um, I won't say that 100% of it's been great, I won't say 100% has been poor, but I mean we're, we're working at it and, and every day, every month we're trying to figure out better ways to do certain things. Um, when I sit in my office, I don't have a lot of people to uh, bounce ideas off of, just me. So I bounce it off, like, yeah, that, that sounds good. So, um, so the, I think we have about 1,000 Chromebooks out. Uh, we implemented those, I, want to say, I don't remember if it was before the holidays last year, or shortly after, maybe it was after the semester. This year it took about, I'd say three weeks to get everything up and running. Um, a lot of that because we had some CISA staff changes um, and I had him working on a lot of different things. Um, but we got through it. Um, I'm sure if we would canvas the staff and the students, they could, we, they could tell me what's working, what's not working. Long story short, um, we have second and seventh grade got new devices this year and eventually those devices will have a life cycle to, to work their way up. Um, the HP devices that we had currently bought in years past, those are now spares in the, H, in the uh, libraries. Um, so we're able to do, we, we have more as far as extras if, if we have to send something in for repair or if there's another issue. Uh, repairs, all of them I send in except for screens. I fix them myself. They all go down in Milwaukee. I get a big Pelican case. I get about 10 of them if there's issues. They go down there, they get fixed, they come back. Um, one thing I'm seeing is the turnaround time on that is that's a couple weeks. Especially if you have one student that either something happens to that device right away when I got the Pelican case back because we got to wait to fill it. Or if it's the, that student that as soon as it went out then I get one right away. That seems to what happens. <laughs> um, overall, I think it, I think it's 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 getting better, and and we will continue to get better with that. Um, I'm I'm trying to be as transparent as I can be with uh, notices, with 
communication, um, and I think we'll we'll do I'll, I will do a little better um, with families and stuff, and have some some information posted on the on the web in the future. Um, over the summer, we had a huge project where we got rid of all the smart boards. So if you've ever worked on a smart board, they're, they're gone. Um, we had a 20 yard dumpster full of them, got rid of them, took all the projectors down. Um, if you've ever worked in that situation, projectors, bulbs constantly go. We had a hundred different makes and models. I had to buy five at a time of this and, and it was just a logistics nightmare. Um, we have went with the clever touches for a touchscreen option, um, which the more that I learn every every time that I have to look something up, they're just amazing um, the, what you can and can't do with them. And I'm going to be sending out probably for the next couple of days, there was some training down in CESA, I got the videos for that, I'm going to give that to the staff so they can uh, watch them and, and figure stuff out on their own if need be. The other option that we have are TVs, all of them come with a brand new cart. Um, the carts are a little big, but they're electric, they go up and down, so it's a one fit all, they, all the displays are 75 inch. Um, they work well in the elementary setting because the screen can go almost all the way down to the floor, and then at the um, high school level, middle school level, they can go up so people can see them. So that was a huge undertaking. Um, with that, those carts, when I made one of them, it took me about an hour and a half to make just one. And we had a hundred of them that we had to make. Um, and I it was right before I had a scheduled vacation to go, so called in some some students. I think Mark Winger, um, he, he came. I had some YAs, and I, I promised them a steak dinner if they would <laughs> get everything done in a week. So each cart came with five boxes. So we had four 20 cubic yard dumpsters full of cardboard um, and packing supplies. So if, if if you saw any of the gyms during the, the summer, it was a huge undertaking. Um, so those are all implemented. Um, we're working on some issues and bugs and stuff like that with casting and, and some wireless solutions. Um, with that though, I'd like to thank the, the maintenance staff. Phenomenal. Steve getting the recycling and the, and the stuff taken care of, the, all of the custodians. Um, when I do a project, I don't expect the custodians to clean up my messes. I always clean up my own messes, um, so I appreciate all of them kind of helping me get that stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, the, with the Chromebooks, the, the, putting that stuff out, Sarah Lawton and Elena Black at the elementary school have been phenomenal. They've taken that, everything is run out of that, um, that library itself, so I don't have to oversee it, I don't have to micromanage it, I don't, I don't have that. We're getting that way in some of the other locations, we're just trying to it's to help speed things up. You know, if a, if a student breaks something, they can go to the library, they can get it, they can move on. If a new student comes or a student leaves, that those processes. Um, so I'd like to thank those, everybody in the libraries that, is, that have helped me and, and the YAs and Lynn and, and all you guys. Um, I'm also working on trying to get a better solution for these two TVs. Obviously, you guys see the, the janky HDMI cord, it's working. But I'm looking at some kind of wireless solution. The old HDMI casting, it's, it's old. So I'm looking at trying to, I'm, I'm canvassing some other school districts, see what they do. And then we, you guys will have a, a better solution here also. Um, the two last things. So another big thing is I'm working with some, some vendors. Uh, we're updating some locks and some cameras and some um, paging issues that were identified last year. Um, I'm working through those lists. I, I got some feelers out for some quotes and stuff, so we're going to be adding some of that stuff for, for safety. Um, just to patch some of the holes maybe that um, through the years have, have arisen. Especially like the outdoor cameras, the cameras that we have now. If you see this camera that's sitting on the outside of the parking lot right here, it's a four-way camera on one pedestal. Um, high def, great. So all the buildings we're replacing those um, and we'll be replacing and getting better definition cameras as need be. Also adding some locks. Um, also the uh, each main entrance to the buildings we're going to tie that into our camera system and the format cast system that we have. So when somebody presses the button it'll come up to be able to answer it from their phone. Not 
not how it's set up now in that little white box. So we're working on some of that stuff. And then lastly, I just hired somebody, uh, pending background investigation, all that. But he is a to help me. Um, so the IT department will become a department with two now. Um, so I'm hopefully, hopefully, we will be able to utilize that person for um, Chromebook stuff. I'll be able to divvy up my stuff, which will free my time up on some of the break fix stuff to do some of the other project planning, some of the other um, grant writing and stuff like that. Um, I don't know if I can say his name. Sure. Yeah, we haven't put it on the agenda yet because oh. uh, we we're we we're <coughs> waiting for and the background check. Guys, right, but he is an Intuosa alum, <coughs> so that is really exciting. <laughs> yeah, it's Logan O'Donnell. Yeah. Oh, you guys know. Oh, so yeah, sure. graduated in '15, um, yeah. and one of the best answers he said during interviews <laughs> is, "He's he wants to be here and learn from us to eventually take my position at some point." So <laughs> <laughs> he's got 15 years to do it. He can have it. <laughs> um, other than that, working on plenty of other things, I just wanted to highlight some of the, the major things that we were working on. So if you guys have any questions or um, if you want specific updates, you can let me know or email me or, or whatever. Yeah. Or, so are you going to bounce the ideas off of Logan now instead of yourself? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is, just making sure, because that way, you know, it just helps, you know. You might think I'm kooky because I talk to myself, especially when I'm writing emails and stuff. Oh, I read it a hundred times. <laughs> it's going to be a learning experience because I think I've been here 12 years in a room by myself. So it's kind of like being in, in prison, you know, you're locked in a room. Get a roomie, though. Oh, yeah, I got a, I got a bunk mate. So. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? I don't think so. I, I mean, we appreciate the work you do, and like we all know, technology is not always smooth, so we expect hiccups down the road anyway. So if there's something more you need from us that we can kind of help ease the process, you know, just reach out and go from there. So, but no, we, we appreciate it. I, we're looking forward to I know the big updates with the TVs have been going well, too. So. <coughs> well, we appreciate you guys supporting the technology department and authorizing and hiring them another person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because Eric it was spent so much time on... Uh, the fixing and the reactive mode, where now he will be more proactive and we can start planning, you know, looking at those projects and hopefully avoiding the reactive state. So thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Thanks, Eric. All right, thank, thank you. you. Good job. Good job. We are going to move over to our student uh, representative, uh, Alexa. All right, so we had our blood drive here last week and we collected 41 units of blood and each unit can actually save up to three lives. Um, and as a school with all the blood drives we've done, we've collected 298 units. So we're just shy of saving up to 1,000 lives. And our next blood drive is gonna be on March 1st. Um, FBLA had a leadership conference on Monday and it went well as far as I know. National Honor Society is doing the Breakfast with Santa event at the Nakusa Court on December 4th, I believe. Link crew, so we meet with the kids every week. And the second quarter beginning, we talk to them about how to study and take notes because they're realizing that they have to pass their classes. And <laughs> they don't. Those are the freshmen. Yeah, the freshmen. <laughs> and they don't all know how to study or take notes properly, especially some of the harder classes. So we talked to them about that last week. We're having a Veterans Day Assembly on Friday. And then for Student Council, we're working on the Winter Spirit Week, which will be coming up before Christmas. And then back from homecoming, we had a penny war and we actually raised $457 for the Southwood County Humane Society. Nice. So the check will be going out to them shortly. And then for sports, girls basketball started on Monday, and they should have two teams this year, so numbers have increased. And then boys basketball and wrestling start next week, Monday. It's good to see the the, the blood drive numbers too. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So, any questions for Alexa? All right. Well, thank you for that. And then I did skip over accidentally on our compensation committee update. So. We will head on over to that. Uh, this will be pretty quick because you guys have heard this several times now over over the past several years. And if you just want to go to the next slide there. <coughs> um, we did a survey again um, at the beginning of October asking about 
um, any uh, concerns, um, satisfaction with the with the compensation plan, and eighty five percent of them are satisfied with the the compensation plan. And I think we had over sixty people. 60 teaching staff members take it this time, whereas last year it was only about 40 or so. It wasn't quite as many. Um, there is a higher interest in the National Board certica Certification. There's currently 10 people pursuing the National Board Certification. And um, moving forward, the biggest concern that we saw in um, the survey was that the professional development, the clarification of it, how to it, how to attain it if they're not doing masters or national board certification, those are very clear paths. But um, with the amount of professional development that we have currently already in place with the district, it's um, where where do we go uh, otherwise for ourselves to further get those PD units. So we'll be working with um, mm -hmm. Terry uh, in regards to clarifying the professional development units, possibly inviting the principals as well to our next committee mm -hmm. meeting. Um, I, we just heard it loud and clear that PD needs some clarification. Yes. So we want to make sure that we're following the you know Terry's directive and the principal's plans in order to streamline the PD. So awesome. we'll work mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Yep. And I know everybody hates surveys, but do we know why? I mean, I mean, we have not taken from 40 to 60 this year, but do we know why? Because we're overwhelmed, and it was one more survey. <laughs> well, so it's, you know, and, and we, we gave a window, too, and if they missed the window, they missed sure. the window. Okay. So, um, and that happens, you open it up, and um, you intend to go back to it, but something else happens, and then you forget it was there. <laughs> so it, it happens. Any questions? I'm just glad that the high number is there of people that are satisfied. Yes. And our revolving door seems to have pretty much stopped. <laughs> um, the 15% that, okay, we're, you know, I mean, we're necessarily negative toward it, but we're just... Did that have to do with the CB, you know? The PD? The, 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 yeah, the personal development. Um, a lot of it, I think, had to do with just unsure of the professional development or feeling um, that we already have a lot on our plates is how am I going to get more units? I'm already taking time away from my family with ever, everything that else that is going on in the current professional development and initiatives of the district. So that was a, to them, that was part of the negative. That was part of the negative, okay. yes. Okay. They sounded tired. Tired, yes. it's, yeah. Okay. So, All right. Yeah. It's good to see so many people wanting to be nationally certified. It's, that's awesome. Yeah. It, it's quite the undertaking. I'm, <laughs> I'm one of those 10 and I am. <laughs> And I am enjoying the process so far. So this is your first year now, right, or second? This is my first. Okay. I just started um, over the summer. So how many do we have now in the second year? Five. Okay, so five and five. Good. Yes, and technically one in the third year. Oh really? Yeah. Cool. Well, we wish you luck in your studies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah get home. Well, to it's a, it really <laughs> what it is is it's a lot of evidence. Proving what we do in the classroom. Um, there's four different components. One focuses on differentiation of kids. One focuses on data and assessment. One focuses on professional learning communities. And one focuses on, um, well, I, th there's one that's like really big and it has a lot of pieces to it. But one that you have to videotape your teaching styles and routines and structure in the class. And then you have a content knowledge test too. Overwhelmed. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Heidi. Yep. Um, and then we did get a packet to look over um, for athletic programs. And if there's questions, we can talk about it in our next board workshop. That will be. Oops. Another packet here. That'll be in December, I believe. December seventh is the next board workshop. So if you guys want to take the time between now and then to look over the board. Um, 
the athletic programs update that as you do, um, come with questions for our workshop to discuss that. So, um, I'm not missing nothing else with communicating with the board, so we will go into policy governance. Terry, if you want to read OE6 financial plan. I'd be happy to. So annually, the board will review the multi-year financial plan that is related directly to the board's results, priorities, and operational expectations goals, and that avoids long-term fiscal jeopardy to the district. So what's been outlined here is um, some topics, and that first one really develop a summary format understandable to the board and presented in a manner that allows the board to understand the relationship between the budget and the results priorities. So we've been working hard as a district to really have everything lead back to those results policies. So this is a visual. So in taking a look at the ultimate results uh, are connected to the strategic plan and certainly our strategic plan is what's driving our current work. But if you look at the financial decisions, there's been no new teaching <coughs> positions uh, in this last year uh, and we are working on one open technical education teaching position. Uh, and then there's upgrades to the equipment in the tech ed lab and certainly we're, we're really going slow with that so that we can bring on the new equipment and really make sense of it and certainly we need to schedule some time up there this year for that but we've spent about half of the 500000 to upgrade the tech ed labs so we're about halfway through. Recruit and retain outstanding district staff and we continue to work on that and that compensation model that the board's approved uh, certainly has helped and uh, you know us doing everything we can to help our teachers feel comfortable uh, and and supporting them in their work with kids so that's part of the 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 work that i think all of us have been working on to really align how we're spending our money to those results policies yeah and definitely i think that the, the tech ed you know shouldn't be come to a surprise to us and we two of it last year we talked about the position here and there too so um so, and, and so this is really fitting, and Lynn, I don't know if you want to talk about any of the topics there, two through seven, but certainly we've gone over a lot of this mm -hmm. uh, in the in the last month related to our annual meeting, right. and it's very fitting that this comes now. So, uh, Lynn, did you have anything that you wanted to share? Well, the only thing I wanted to mention is that um, we as a, or you as a board, will need to talk about um, the next planning for the referendum. Uh, we are in year three of a five-year referendum planning mm -hmm. and typically we need to have that rolled out uh, in the last year of the referendum so we can all be on the same page in our communication and making sure that the community is well aware that we will be coming to them again for a vote um, i have started that conversation in the newsletter i actually um, wrote a letter or wrote an article in the last newsletter uh, talking about keeping our promises and I laid out the promises that we made and how we kept them so um, I think we're in a good position I just don't want to lose any momentum and just to clarify operational is what we're considering we are but we can always talk about others as well okay. uh, and I know with the election and the number of school districts that were up for a referendum that did not pass again yeah, yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of them that didn't pass 69 percent passed okay. oh really yes so but lo locally like stratford and adams. merrill and adams, didn't pass. adams and there were a number that are in the area that did not pass so so mo most, most important that we keep our promises yeah, yep, and continue exactly. to get the word out about how well we're doing mm -hmm. with using their dollars absolutely so thank you Lynn, unless us. there's a yes thank you lynn um moving forward on keeping promises and i'm just going to look for your motion then um, for oe6 unless there's any discussion so moved. second first and the second all in favor please say aye. Aye. aye aye opposed none motion carried thank you uh a few more to go over we have oe7 financial administration yeah, so annually the board shall assure that the district administrator has not caused or allowed any financial activity or condition that uh, materially deviates 
from the budget adopted by the board, caused or allowed any fiscal condition that is inconsistent, inconsistent with achieving the board's results or meeting any operational expectation goals or place the long-term financial health of the district in jeopardy. So what you have outlined here is, you know, statements that get around that promise to you right. from administration. I haven't seen any red flags. I know if there were, we'd be discussing it way before this would come through. So um, <coughs> unless there's discussions, I'll just look for a motion for OE7. So move. Second. First and second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Thank you. Th Lynn, and thank you for the thorough report. Oh, sure. And OE8, asset protection. Sure, the district administrator will assure that all district assets are adequately protected, properly maintained, appropriately, appropriately used, and not placed at undue risk. So, so there's a couple of attachments that were uh, embedded in the policy, and that's basically talking about our property liability umbrella insurances. Um, my, I guess my um, request, or I just want you to know, that if you ever want our insurance agent, EMC, to come in and just give you a presentation on the various policies that you hold, we certainly can plan that at some point in the future. Uh, we did have an increase in our uh, workers' comp insurance, but I believe I was talking about that last year that mm -hmm. I was warning you that we were going to have a pretty big increase. Mm -hmm. Well, we increased pretty big. So uh, right now, I, we have a mod rate of, I think, 1.04, which is not good. Anytime you're above one, uh, you're, you're paying more than the industry average. We had a pretty big claim that came in, and that's going to be on our books now for three years. So uh, we knew it, we were planning for it, and so we were, we were okay with it. So, oh, it's 1.11, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, shoot, okay. It's even worse. Yeah, so th it's just a summary of our policies. I am always on the lookout, especially with cyber insurance, uh, because of all of the ransomware that is out there. I want to make sure that if we ever are hit with a ransomware uh, attack, I want to make sure that we have a policy that covers most of that because that can get into the millions of dollars mm -hmm. easily. So I have, um, I have actually upped our insurance on our cyber insurance. We also have, um, it's called, uh, um, what's that last one, Terry? The Data compromise. Oh, the, next, the other one above it. Uh, and errors, errors and omissions. Oh, okay. So there was, I know there was one Umbrella? that... Umbrella? Nope. General liability? Data oh, equipment floater, electronic data. No, that wouldn't be it. Yeah, I think it was the equipment, the data, uh, the data, electronic data processing. That is the one that I added. That that um, kind of marries with the equipment floater. So okay. I'm always, you know, I meet with our insurance agent on, a, on an annual basis, and we go over each one of these policies to make sure that we're, we're uh, adequately covered. Uh, I just don't ever want to get in a position where something happens and we're not covered. So. Makes and sense. it's happening. It's happening out there. That Not here. No. There. <laughs> no in other districts, and there, it's messy. I'm all about being proactive, so thank you, Lynn. Yep. Um, following that, OE8, looking for a motion? Also moved. Second. First and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. And we are on our last one here. Uh, GP7, agenda plan. Yeah, to accomplish its stated goals, the board will adopt and follow an annual calendar of agenda items, which includes monitoring, reviewing, and refining of policies, linkages, and board <coughs> performance, in addition to evaluation of the district administrator. So that board of, board of Education monitoring calendar, we just keep editing that and reviewing it as you guys come up with new ways and new ideas and new agenda items. So Diana does a really good job of keeping track of our agendas and our calendar. We like the work that you do. <laughs> I like the work that she does. She helps me out a lot with a lot of things. <laughs> there right. you go, Diana. So no, so no complaints about Diana looking for a motion. <laughs> <laughs> so move. Second. Well, I have a complaint. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Thank you. 
All right, we are we're sailing through this um, consent agenda out of the employment here. Uh, Justice Kuhn, Special Education Program Assistant at Humpke and AMS. Congratulations. We have Todd Boudreaux, our Varsity Assistant Baseball Coach, and Hayden Caberly, Head JV Baseball Coach. Congratulations to those new coaches and hires. And then Darren, yes. uh, a couple of donations for us. Yes, yes. So we received some puzzles, games, and toys uh, to the district from Ann Leepak, which I uh, very much appreciated. And again, the backpack for kids. Uh, we're lucky to get donations every month on these. Twenty-seven dollars and thirty cents from Roll Makers. Uh, Seventy-five dollars from the Sacred Heart Collections. At eighty dollars from Bethlehem, Bethlehem Lutheran Women's Admission. So women in mission. So thank you very much for all that. Uh, those donations. So yes, very much you. appreciated. Um, and then minutes. Uh, 1019 was our regular board meeting. Um, at this time, I'm going to look for your motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. First and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, so our future agenda items, we're going to have our board workshop on the 7th of December. Um, speaking of Diana, if she could toss on the athletic improvement updates on there just to kind of discuss when you find time this week. And then December 14th would be our regular board meeting. Um, we'll discuss the school calendar and emergency action drills and potential for a therapy dog. All right. um, unless there... Um, so I'm going to go into... I see we have closed session, but I think I need to... I guess we're going to adjourn into a closed session. Mm -hmm. um, so looking for a motion to end the board meeting, and then we'll let everyone leave, and we'll go into a closed session. So moved. First. Second. Second. Um, all in favor, please say aye. No. Nope. Roll call. Roll call. All right. Cody Wazowski. Yes. Dave Schmidt. Yes. Darren uh -huh. Olson. Yes. Mark Washer. Yes. I vote yes. That was trusty. All right, thank you everyone. We'll have a short bathroom break and